so how to interpret the results if we are working on the incubation period method for the viral titrations result interpretation is very important for the incubation period in general there are the nucleotide regions which are lesions which are going to be shown in different kind of the viruses so incubation period means that you are going to inject different kind of the inoculums and then you will see different kind of the dilutions and you will see that when the first signs are appeared on that specific just like we see in the last slides for the rabbit papilloma virus which will show us the lesions on the skin of that specific kind of the viruses similarly in general there are number of necrotic lesions not the linear function of the concentration of the viruses they are dependent on the concentration of the viruses and how much concentration of virus is present in that specific kind of the inoculum which we are going to use and similarly it will also cause as the it will also follow the dilution curves that how much dilution you have used for that specific kind of the inoculum which is used here for example in this example you can see that here are we are using two units of the antigen and then the number of the virus lesions we have already seen this curve in the last slides here you are going to lesions which are appeared after the virus inoculation are presented in the terms of 100 200 and 300 lesions and then the antigen which are going to use the different dilutions so at that specific points there will be a straight line it doesn't depends that antigen is going to increase whether the dilutions because the antigens is the dilution then there will be the no effect on that specific dilutions because it is virus has become too smaller in the dilutions in the form that the lesions are come in the straight line or sometimes they are even disappear for comparison of the different samples we are just we have seen in the last slides that how you will see the different samples from different animals for the viruses so we need to use in the different ranges of the concentrations the curves we seen in the last slides represents the dependence of the number of lesions on the concentration of the virus which is going to be used in the inoculum and this is the steepest slope will be very easily clear so for this virus incubation periods so for the titration of the viruses there are some different kinds of the assays which are used for the viruses titrations and see the virus present in scent specific other than these methods which we have already studied there are some kind of the protein assays which are used for this procedures there is a heme agglutination assay of course we, we already know that there are two kinds of the proteins present in the viruses heme glutenin and the so therefore we use it as a for the for the amount of the viruses which is present in some spread dilutions we can use the heme agglutination assay we can use whether it is concentrated the heme agglutination protein or not then the bisiconic acid is also present and this we can use this procedures single radial amino definition assay which can also be used these are some specific kind of the proteins which are used for the very virus then the transmission electron microscopy these are the uh, traditional techniques which are going to be used for the virus titrations which are the virus present in some specific kind of the dilutions which are present and then we can use it these methods or these protein assays these are the we have used the bacterial uh, virus titrations the different assays very different ways and then we can use that there are the additional procedures the traditional procedures which are concerned with the proteins and you can use also use them for the presence of for the investigation of the presence of the viruses in your solutions or in your dilutions now the incubation period method and the incubation period method which can we can also use the different uh, virus preparations this is here you can see that virus preparation one and virus preparation two one into hundred dilution infected cells are very supernatant here and then the one into 100, 200 dilutions one to four hundred infected the cells supernatant and one into eight hundred dilution infected supernatants and you can see it it will be the no virus control and then virus control virus antibody added enzyme tagged secondary antibody added and the substrate added so from these experiments you can just you have already seen that you have already added the tag the antibody inside that experiments and then the substrates are also tagged in these experiments so it will be very easy for you to see 
that uh, to examine the viruses which are present and here you can see it is 1 into 400 dilutions you can see that virus preparation 1 there are the antibodies here there are the enzymes which is tagged with the antibody and then the virus with the antibodies however 1 into 800 dilutions these are the absent virus preparation 2 the both of them are still present into 1 into 800 dilutions so these are the traditional methods for the viral titration for the investigation of to see that which kind of the viruses are present or the virus concentration to see in our samples now these are some different kinds of the methods we will see that the uh, we can also call them as the modern techniques which are used these days to see the virus presence municipal resistance pulse senses which is also called as trps which can be used then the flow cytometry which is concerned with the our specific kind of the antibodies are used for this flow cytometries and we can see it and we can uh, we can see uh, for, for those our viruses for specific kind of the viruses we can see then the uh, qpcr polymerase chain reaction which is quantitative type of the polymerase chain reaction we can also tell us that quantity of specific kind of the viruses and then the elisa enzymes linked assays are there just to take an example for these procedures we can just have taken an example of the elisa here this is the direct elisa and this is the indirect elisa and we can see that how we can see that the virus infected cells are there or the virus infected cells are there in the both these elisa experiments cells were incubated with the fluorescence label the antiviral antibodies However, the cells were unlabeled in the indirect ELISA. Here are the same procedures, first after the incubation and then the virus infected cells are here. This is uninfected control. Similarly, virus infected and then the control. Virus, the experiments, the, to proceed the experiment, it is washed with the unbound antibodies. Again, labeled with the secondary antibody. Of course, this is the indirect ELISA. So exposed to the UV lights just to see and the fluorescent microscope to see under that microscope. These were indirect ELISA washed to remove the unbound country antibodies and then they were exposed to the UV lights and similarly we were examined under the fluorescent microscope for both of the cases and the results were very clear. So in this way we can just use the modern techniques to see the viruses to examine the viruses in the laboratory and similarly we can use the traditional techniques and we can just like the protein assays we have already seen.